वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला एंड आई एम शोभिक मुखोपाध्याय फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कोलकाता डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हिस्ट्री एंड वी विल बी डीलिंग विथ द इंडियन पॉलिटी एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर पेपर आई विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन चालुक्य पॉलिटी टुडे रियलम ऑफ पोलिटिकल हिस्ट्री वी जेनरली फोकस ऑन द डायनास्टिक हिस्ट्रीज बट पॉलिटी इज अ बिट डिफरेंट थिंग बिकॉज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द डायनास्टिक हिस्ट्री विच विल ऑब्वियसली बी पार्ट ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन वी विल ऑल्सो बी डीलिंग विथ द इमरजेंस ऑफ चालुकीय स्टेट किंग एंड द मोनोकिकल गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज द पोलिटिकल स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड ऑब्वियसली the decentralized nature of the polity we will try to explain what's the real nature of this political structure of the chalukyas were the chalukyas ruled from 6th to almost 11th century it emerged with the uh, western De western part of dekan and possibly chalukya vallaveshwara that is pulakeshi the first he asserted his independence from the kadamba rule and that is how the chalukya polity emerged and from that point the chalukyas and their collateral branches like the vengi chalukyans ruling in the andhra country and the lord chalukyans ruling in gujarat and later one collateral branch which asserted its power in the homeland ancient homeland of the vatapi chalukyans uh, that is the kalyani chalukyans these the main branch and the collateral branches continued to dominate the whole of dekan from maharashtra to andhra till the 11th century of the common era so that will be our focus now second pulakeshi who is famous because he won against harshavardhana was the first ruler of the dynasty who went on to an expeditionary tour after defeating harsha and conquered the eastern dekan possibly resting vengi from the hands of the vishnu kundins and uh later in that particular tour expeditionary tour he came into conflict with the pallavas with mahendra varman the first then ruling for the pallavas after he returned back uh kubja vishnuvardhana his brother he was placed on the throne vengi throne but most in important thing is this line of conflict between the chalukyas uh, residing in the western part of dekan and the pallavas uh, ruling in the uh, deeper south this became a kind of persistent line of conflict in the south indian history for almost a millennium and the consecutive kingdoms and the empire set in the present maharashtra karnataka region were ranged up against the kingdoms located in the tamil country later when the rashtrakutas replaced the vatapi chalukyans by the middle of the 8th century with kirti varman the second being the last ruler of the chalukyans defeated by danti durga this conflict with the pallavas continued and later when the cholas replaced the pallavas in deep south that is the tamil nadu region uh, by the end of the 9th century the rashtrakutas and the cholas continued to fight among amongst each other and later when the kalyani chalukyans uh, replaced the rashtrakutas the uh, kalyani chalukyans continued to fight with the cholas till the end of their existence the dominant theme of the continuous enmity and the continuous war preparedness shaped the nature of the polity of the region to a large extent in addition dekan on the west 
is dominated by the Karnataka plateau and on the east by the Andhra plateau. So the geographical features played a significant role in the shaping, of, uh, shaping up of the polity because this plateau region with uh, dominated by the archaic Nice and uh, divided into the uh, high upland region and the penny plains. This region is uh, dominated by say the upland country which is not very favorable for the um, agriculture interspersed by some uh, river valleys. So uh, this region did not have a great amount of agricultural surplus which could support a very strong, very, very centralized kind of polity. And because of these two factors, one that is the continuous struggle between the Deccan and the Deep South and two because of this geographical uh, location as well as the geographical conditions, we find that in the Deccan region, uh, though the Chalukyans dominated for quite some time, for almost 400 or almost 500 years, but the polity was a bit decentralized where it was a kind of loose confederation of semi-autonomous regions. This is the basic characteristic of the Chalukya polity, which we will try to explain uh, much uh, in much greater detail in our subsequent uh, period. And there we will be focusing on the role of the minor chieftains. Uh, mm, minor chieftain like the western Gongo uh, king uh, Durvinita, who was the maternal uncle of Vikramaditya I when there was a mm, crisis in the Vatapi Chalukya kingdom because Pulakeshi II possibly was killed because of a Pallava incursion in the Vatapi Chalukya country. Then under the um, political turmoil, it was the maternal uncle who helped Vikramaditya I to attain the throne. And this role played by the minor chieftains became a persistent feature in the political history of the region. We will be focusing on the king and the monarchical government. Uh, in those days, uh, the monarchical polity was uh, the most important thing. The mainline Vatapi Chalukyans and the collateral branches of the Chalukyans for, uh, followed a kind of monarchical form of government with the king personally attending to the details of the administration as well as war. The succession was generally through primogeniture, that is the eldest son succeeding the father at the time of his death. But there are some um, exceptions as well. For instance, when uh, Pulakeshi the second was a minor, the um, reign was rested with or it remained with his uncle Mangalesh. But when Pulakeshi the second attained age, Mangalesh refused to uh, give the throne to Pulakeshi. So there was a kind of internecine struggle. And this kind of instance, though very few and far between, can be found during the reign of the Kalyani Chalukyans as well. Next thing, if king was the most important thing, the mo next uh, important thing that we should focus upon that how the king perceived himself that is the self image of the king and two that is um, how this self image was reflected. The most important thing that we will be focusing upon is the kind of royal epithet that emerged or slowly evolved through the different rulers or different kings of these dynasties. Founder of the Chalukya power, Pulakeshi I, adopted the title Shatyasraya Sri Prithivi Vallava Maharaja. Pulakeshi II 
after he defeated Harsha, added the epithet Parameshwara. Later, Vikramaditya I added higher titles of Paramountcy, that is Maharaja Dhiraj and Bhattaraka. Thus, the title became Shatyasraya, Sri Prithvi Vallava, Maharaja Dhiraja, Parameshwara, Bhattaraka. Now, later, as I told that the Kalyani Chalukyans, they were of a collateral branch and after defeating the Rashtrakutas, they established their power in the um, homeland of the Chalukyans. This Kalyani Chalukyans perceived themselves as the successor of the Vatapi Chalukya mantle. So, what they did was to uh, further embellish the uh, Chalukya imperial epithet. What comes later, we will be finding that is, uh, they will be adding something to the imperial epithet. So, uh, the full style of the imperial epithet ultimately became with the additions and alterations made by the Kalyani Chalukyans was Shamasta Bhubanashraya Shri Prithivi Ballava Maharaja Dhiraj Parameshwara Param Bhattaraka Shattasraya Kula Tilaka Chalukya Bharana Srimat. What is the meaning? Shamasta Bhubanashraya means asylum of the whole world. Shri Prithivi Vallava is beloved of the goddess of prosperity as well as Mother Earth. Maharaja Dhiraj, great king of the kings, Parameshwara, supreme lord, Parambhattaraka, great lord, Shattasraya Kulatilaka, Tilak of the Shattasraya dynasty and Chalukya Bharana Srimat, that is the ornament of the Chalukyas. In the Kalyani Chalukya period, also we should keep in mind that uh, there was distinctive title of each and every king with a suffix malla that is wrestler added to this imperial epithet. So, Shomeshwara, the Kalyani Chalukya king, he had a title ahava malla that is wrestler in war. So, this was the nature how the king was trying to project himself in the eyes of the uh, ruled uh, the common population as well as the uh, associates. Royal coronation was important and the royal coronation was generally held at a place known as Kisuvolal. The practice continued during the time of Kalyani Chalukyans. The place was described as Veera Shimhasana and the modern name is Pattadakkal that is the form of coronation stone. It is the, in local parlance, it means coronation stone. Vatapi Chalukyans made a practice of installing the heir apparent as Yuvaraj as he attained the age. Vikramaditya I associated his son uh, in the practical administration. Kirti Varman also was given a practical hands-on job training by his father Vikramaditya the second. Uh, Kalyani Chalukyans instituted the practice of putting the Yavaraj in charge of Belavola 300 and Purigere 300. Together they were described as Erandanuru that is 600. They were given a distinct investiture symbol Kanthika a kind of necklace which possibly started with the Rashtrakutas and this is also important that sometimes in absence of the qualified prince the title Yuvaraja for the time being temporarily was conferred upon some trusted officials that also we have found from the inscriptions. 
other family members other than the eldest son they also were entrusted with responsibility of administering important divisions as i told that when pulakeshi the second went on the expeditionary tour to the eastern part of deccan and later invaded kanchi his younger brother kubja vishnu vardhana was left in charge of the capital when pulakeshi returned back to his capital kubja vishnu vardhana was sent to vengi as the viceroy and he founded the collateral branch of the vengi or the eastern chalukyans which continued to rule till 1070 a kind of collateral branch or you, we can very well use the term fission taking place in the uh, dynastic uh, line another collateral branch was the lard chalukyans who ruled in gujarat and another important feature was that sometimes we find queens and princes princesses they were also playing important public role now if king is the most important thing the king either listened to petitions or gave orders which was expressed by the term raja shravitam which could either mean reported to the king that is king is listening or the king is pronouncing something which is also heard by somebody else which is corresponding to the tamil term tiru vai kelvi which means heard from the sacred mouth these oral orders were taken down by royal secretaries holding the title sandhi vigrahika or sandhi vigrahi for instance ravi kirti of the great aihol prashasti of pulakeshi the second was himself a sandhi vigrahi a ministerial post which we will explain later in the raigad plates we come across four generations of such royal secretaries coming one after another belonging to the punya ballava family the names are shri rama niravadya anivarita and dhananjaya who were who wrote important orders inscriptions for the successive vatapi chalukyan kings now we will be focusing on the royal ministers the king was ably assisted by competent and trustworthy group of ministers both in the council chambers as well as battlefields because some of the ministers they accompanied the kings in the battles as well however at least during the time of the vatapi chalukyans there were neither regularly constituted council of ministers nor regular distribution of portfolios a particular inscription of someshwara the 3rd of the kalyani chalukyan dynasty mentions following officers or ministers present during the time of a presentation that is a gift or donation being given they are maha pradhana that is chief minister antah puradhaksha that is superintendent of the royal harem or the royal household kari turaga sahana vargadde that is a minister of the elephant and the cavalry corps shri karanam that is chief accountant heri sandhi vigrahi senior foreign minister pashapita the master of the royal robes senadhipati general mane vergadde that is palace controller or chamberlain who looked after the uh, palace hada padava that is bearer of the battle uh, beetle pouch and rajadhiksha 
that is the king's representative present when the Mahajanas, the great men of the villages, generally the Brahmins, gifted some land. And finally, Dandanayaka, that is the master of staff or the commanding officer of the army. Administration of the empire was becoming more complex day by day. And that's why the number of the offices multiplied greatly during the time of the Kalyani Chalukyans. Able and experienced ministers were allowed to hold many offices simultaneously. The position of Mane Vergadde or Bhanasa Vergadde, that is the royal steward or the chef, Bhanasa literally meaning uh, kitchen, were held together by Anantapal for many years under Vikramaditya the fifth and his successors. Very briefly, we, if we go through such kind of uh, titles, Mahapradhana, that means the chief minister denoting seniority, uh, Antahpuradhyaksha, that is superintendent of the royal harem, and generally this position was held by the prominent generals or, and statesmen. And the nature of the duty is not very clear, but they were very close to the uh, royal uh, family. Sandhi Vigrahi, generally it is translated as foreign minister, who were entrusted with conducting the diplomatic negotiations, but it was not only concerned with the relations with the foreign powers, but possibly handled relations with the ancient ruling lineages within the realm, that is the Samantas. According to the contemporary literary text Manasol Lhasa, it required a Sandhi Vigrahika to be acquainted with many languages and scripts. He should have under outstanding tact and skill to deal with Samantas and Mandaleshwaras. So, he should finally be a, an expert in diplomacy as well as finance. The empire was divided into the Lard, that is the north, and Karnataka, south. And in the inscriptions, we hear about the Kannada Sandhi Vigrahi or the Ladha Sandhi Vigrahi and the adjective Heri, that is we have already found in Heri Sandhi Vigrahi. Heri was suffixed with the Sandhi Vigrahi possibly to denote the seniority. Most distinguished officers, ministers, who hold, they generally held several portfolios simultaneously. So, we find in, an, uh, in a record from Soratur during the reign of Shomesh, Shomeshwara II, uh, dated in 1071, Bala Devaya, he was bestowed with the epithets Sriman, Mahapradhanam, Chief Minister, Heri Sindha, Sandhi Vigrahi, the senior most uh, foreign minister, Senadhipati, Commander, Kadita Vergadde, and Dandanayaka. And in the same inscription earlier, he has been described as Kuntaladhisha, Shitopodesha, Dhurandhara, foremost in offering wholesome advice to the lord of the Kuntala country. Apart from these uh, officers or ministers, we as just we have seen Kadita Vergadde or Karanam was used for uh, people who were in constant attendance on the empire during the public business. They used to make notes of his royal orders and later put them in proper shape or form for official action. Also, we come across a title Dharmadhikari from Gadag, an inscription of Vikramaditya the sixth. We come to know about Mahapradhanam Dandanayakam, Srimad, Ayamgalu, Someshwara, Bhattopadhyaya. He was an erudite scholar, master of all branches of learning, both sacred as well as secular, that is 
uh, Vaidik and Laukika and Vikramaditya made him Dharmadhikari, placed all his material resources, Samasta Sampada, at the disposal of this person and whenever they met, King used to raise his hand in salutation, that is Anjali, and the royal ladies revered him as a guru. So, it seems that the title denoted a chief superintendent of religious affairs. King or kings, they honored these high officials by bestowing certain symbols or privileges on them. For instance, Vikramaditya conferred upon Kesava Gavunda of Goduva family of Potur, that is Hottur, his own title, the title used by Vikramaditya himself, Chalukya Ganga Vermadi, and allowed him, that is Kesava Gavunda, to use uh, or carry white umbrella, double chauris of gold, flag or ensign of his own, war drum, parasol of peacock feathers and other insignias. So, the king allowed these high officials to use royal insignias and there were many such uh, um, honors bestowed upon these senior officials. As I told that they were continuously fighting with the Pallavas or the other country. So, they needed a very strong army. Uh, in Yasha Tilaka Champu, a contemporary literary text uh, composed by Soma Deva Suri, we find a description of a military review of the Dekani army with the full description of their uniform and other symbols being used by the army. Also, in the inscriptions, we come across a title, Sahavasigal Adhishthayaka. Now, what is the meaning of this Sahavasi or in plural Sahavasigal? They were, as has been explained by some of the epigraphists like Rice, uh, they uh, were kind of regulators of the companion. Now, it indeed was referring to the companion or a select band of devoted soldiers who were ready to lay down their lives in the service of the monarchs. In the time of the Cholas, we found that similar such uh, army, very close trusted lieutenants of the king, who were known by the title like Avattu Udavigal, they were prevalent there. So, Sahavasigal can be equated with such uh, people like the Avattu Udavigal, who uh, took oath to lay down their life if the king was in danger. Now, we will be focusing on the feudatories. As we have already told that the Chalukya state was not highly centralized or unitary compared to the states like the Cholas. And the conquered rulers or members of the ancient lineages were allowed to continue ruling their respective domain as the vassals. During the time of the Kalyani Chalukyans, uh, extensive part of the empire was divided into many provinces governed by the feudatory chiefs who came to be known as the Mahamandaleshwaras. Uh, during the time of the Kalyani Chalukyans, the Silahara, Silahara dynasty, Silaharas were ruling over southern Konkan, that is present Ratnagiri, northern Konkan, that is present Kolhapur or Karad, and uh, Satara uh, and the extreme north part of Belgaum. Ratta's family, another family, were ruling over Kundi 3000, that is presently Saundhati and Belgaum. And the Kadambas of Hanagal, 
uh, it was situated in the present Dharwad district of Maharashtra and then Sindhas of Yelburga, they were ruling over uh, Dharwad and the northern part of Bellary. The Hoysalas, who later became the great ruling uh, dynasty themselves, they were ruling over the greater part of Hassan as well as Kadur. So these were some of the important feudatories who were ruling over the um, different parts of the Chalukya, uh, um, Chalukya domain. Uh, um, these uh, families, the, they played a very important role in the life of the uh, Chalukya rule. Uh, apart from uh, and these feudatories, sometimes they were uh, becoming a danger for the Chalukya rule as well. Uh, powerful monarchs like Vijayaditya II found it tough to control the Hoysala uh, Mahamandaleshwara and uh, once Hoysala Mahamandaleshwara Vishnu Vardhana, uh, he invaded Uchangi and Belvola. It was only the timely intervention of the Mahamandaleshwara Sindha chief Achugi II, which saved the day for the Kalyani Chalukyans. And it should be kept in mind that the Kalyani Chalukyans ultimately succumbed under the pressure of the increasingly assertive Mahamandaleshwaras, particularly the Hoysalas. Pampa, the great Kannada poet, in his Vikramarjuna Vijaya, started the prashasti about the feudatory chiefs with the phrase Samastadhigata Pancha Mahashavda. And the chiefs, they were ruling from Nelevidus, that is Rajdhani, capital. Now this word, Samastadhigata Pancha Mahashavda, it means a person who has the right over the great five sounds, that is they were allowed to bear the different kinds of war drums which was itself a great honor and this honor was bestowed upon these feudatory chiefs by the king. The only difference in the formula employed to describe the feudatories lies in the omission of a particular phrase that is Uttara Uttara Vivivruddhi Pravardhamanam Achandra Kataram Varam Saluttam Ire, which indicates increasing prosperity and permanence of rule, which occurred only in the imperial records. What was the nature of the provincial and the local administration? Different terms have been used in the um, Chalukya inscriptions like Rashtra, Vishaya. For instance, Bana Raja Vishaya or other such uh, terms being used. The most common territorial divisions were known as Rashtra, Vishaya, Nadu and there were larger and or major territorial divisions though Vishaya and Nadu sometimes were distinguished by divisions smaller than Rashtra. And Below the Nadu, we have the subdivision Kampana. Also, another minor territorial division emerges in the inscriptions, Thana, which possibly meant a kind of fiscal devotion, a division rather than the territorial division. A peculiar tradition emerged during the time of the Kalyani Chalukyan realm. Already we have seen that some numerical denominations were used to denote provincial units. Possibly, this practice came into vogue under the Rashtrakutas. The provincial administration 
was looked after by people with titles like Nada Arasa. Arasa means ruler. So the ruler or the governor of the Nadu, he came to be known as Nada Arasa and distinguished from a person having the title Nal Gavunda, which possibly meant a person in charge of collecting uh, dues. Possibly a small police force was stationed in every village uh, with a talari at the head. There were also cavalry troops at the disposal of the local government, but in case of any emergency, the ordinary inhabitants themselves were ready to meet the uh, situation. We find uh, hero stones, the memorial stones raised in the memory of the fallen heroes who have laid down their life to face such kind of emergency situations when the villages were being attacked by the uh, outsiders or the cattle wealth was being uh, stolen by the robbers. These hero stones uh, dot the countryside of the Chalukya domain. Finally, in a summary, we can say that today we have dealt with, discussed about the Chalukyas who had a large kingdom. We also discussed briefly about the main line that is the Vatapi Chalukyans and the collateral branches like the Vengi Chalukyas or Lord Chalukyans or the uh, Kalyani Chalukyans who ruled over the entire Deccan for more than 400 years. The nature of the Chalukya polity was a kind of loose confederation which resulted from the convergence of several factors and the kingdom had several layers of administrative structure, the nature of which is expressed through certain kind of uh, terms, uh, administrative terms being used. Thank you.